everybody, I'm back, uh, this time with my, uh, my 1969 PSA graded collection. This is obviously the last video for the 60s. Uh, this will just cover 1969 because there were so many different uh, things to collect. Uh, 69 is where we see things explode as far as people other than tops getting involved in some little uh, subsets, photo stamps, you've got the globe imports. And then Tops comes out with several other subsets like the Deckle Edge. There's stamps, uh, there are test issues of the Top Supercard, and then the foreign ones. So uh, starting here with the uh, 1969 Globe Imports, uh, these are not very difficult to get. And pardon, and the lighting here is poor in this corner. Got Gibson in a nine, Willie McCovey in an eight, Frank Robinson. They, they just have a plain card front. Uh, the back is just white, nothing on the back. And then here, these uh, Major League photo stamps from 1969 came in a, in a sheet of nine. I have some of the players I collect all just randomly cut up. Marichal McCovey, Gibson, Perry, Lou Brock, and then Frank Robinson. All those in a nine. Once again, not that difficult to get those in a high grade. Uh, this Nabisco TM Flakes is a little bit harder to get in a high grade. It, it comes off the box, a cereal, back of a cereal box, excuse me. Uh, similar to the post serial uh, cards from 61, 62, and 63. And then looking at this transgram, uh, if I showed this in another video, it is just a three because it does have some creasing here, but otherwise a very sharp card. Very comparable to my 1971 that I'll show in a later video. That is a near mint, mint eight. And then on to 69 itself, the league leader cards. Uh, I typically try to get the 69 cards in 7s or 8s. I have a few 6s as you'll see. But uh, Bob Gibson coming off his great year of 68 is in quite a few of these league leader cards. And then on to the Ernie Banks that shows the same image of Ernie as it did in 68. Then a Mike Ryan and a Joe Morgan. Once again, Joe Morgan's picture is the same one from his 68 shot as well. Coming down here, uh, and this Johnny Bench. Love this Johnny Bench. Had this card as a kid in a really nice, uh, clean card back then. And uh, got this it's just in a six because I didn't want to spring over 100 bucks for it. But super cool card of Johnny Bench. Just got that trophy for the all rookie team. And just the classic pose of him squatting there and just how young he looks. And then there's two variations of this Bob Gibson checklist one says John and one says Jim Purden. And then a Pete Rose from that year, 69. And this uh, Gibson fan, 17. It is off center, but a great, another great action shot. Uh, the Cardinals would go on to lose that World Series to the Tigers. And then uh, Gibson in a 7, Sutton in an 8. Then Frank Robinson in an 8, although it is off center. Steve Carlton. And then this uh, Reggie Jackson, Jackson in a 6. Uh, centering is a t it's kind of a tough card to get well centered and this one has some centering issues as well. That's why it's a six. Then a Don Drysdale checklist and a Phil Necro. Juan Marichal, Orlando Cepeda. And then going on they also did a, a nice colorful uh, all-star card here. The 69 ones like those. The backs of these also have puzzle, puzzle pieces like the 68. So Gibson, Rose, Carew, McCovey. And then here, um, two vari one variation of the Willie McCovey card in the white. It's just a VGX, and it's a, it's a fair grade on that. It has some centering and condition issues. And then his uh, the, the normal one in the yellow, I have that in a 7. Then the Jim Perry, I have that in a 7, uh, just the last name in yellow. And then Rod Crew, this is the same image they use in his 68 card. Really nice, uh, I like the 69 Nolan Ryan. It's his first individual issue card. Although I'm still trying to figure out why the ball's still in his glove and he's pretending to throw. Okay, and I can't figure that one out. Hoyt Wilhelm in an 8. <laughs> uh, another card. Had this card all beat up when I was a kid. This Willie McCovey one Marischal card in, in front of the batting cage. It's a cool card. And then uh, Jim Palmer, an eight. And a couple of high high series rookie cards with the uh, 
Raleigh Fingers and the, the Bobby Bonds, Barry, Barry Bonds' dad. Pretty good player in his own right. Then moving on to some of the many subsets the Tops did in 69. We see these Tops decals. These were initially issued in packs. Although later on, someone found a large roll of these. So a lot of them that you see graded today more than likely came from that large roll and then were later cut and sent out for grading. But hey, it gives us a lot of fine examples uh, like that Gibson in a 9, that Willie McCovey in an 8, this Frank Robinson 8. These were all pretty good quality. I think this uh, Pete Rose one actually was in a pack. It shows a little bit more wear and it's, it's a lower grade of 7. And then this was the first year Tops did these decal edges. These decal edge cards, they're black and white, not that imaginative, and they're using a lot of the same imagery, like that Rod Crew is the same image from 68 and his regular 69. But to get these in higher grades is just nearly impossible. They just don't grade very well. And uh, like this crew, that's a five, is very clean. It actually doesn't have very, that centering is a little off on it, but uh, still not bad. And that Gibson in a six, it's still a decent grade for these. The McCovey in a seven, I also have the McCovey in a five, which I'm not showing. But uh, that's a really good grade for that McCovey as a seven. And then the one Marischal at a five. Yeah, not too expensive on these, but just a, a little subset. And then Tops also delved into the stamps here for the first, well, they did issue stamps in 61 and 62, but this is the first time they did it separately. These weren't as inserts and packs. These are just, these came in a larger set of panels uh, that you could buy as kids. And so I've got the Bob Gibson, the Gaylord Perry. I've got an Ernie Banks stamp as well. And then just the, the last two cards I want to cover here from 69, uh, two very tough issues. Uh, the top super issue, which is very hard to find. It's a high glossy card. And on the back, I'll show the back on this as well. That's what it looks like on the back. It just gives the player's name and gives the, the number. It, it was considered a test issue, so not something that was mass produced are sold out to the masses. It's very tough to get these, so I got that in a 9. That's a very nice grade on that. But because it wasn't issued in packs that, that I know of, uh, the examples that are out there are usually in very high grade. And this one right here, another test issue, this Topps 4-in-1. What Topps did, I think they did um, a Series 3. So any regular Series card uh, from Series 3, they issued on the backs of these. And these are actually stickers. So four stickers to a panel. And once again, um, the Bob Gibson one, there's a Bob Gibson, there's a Pete Rose, and a Carl Yastrzemski. Those are the most valuable uh, of these cards. But if you were to try to get that whole subset, it'd be difficult to get, definitely in a high grade. I haven't seen a whole lot of these out there. Uh, but this Nearman 7, boy, I, was, I saw it come online on eBay a couple years ago, and I was really happy to snatch it up. It's one of my most favorite items that I have, since it's just so rare. But uh, once again, uh, this concludes my 69 set and all my cards from, this, uh, from the 60s. So uh, thank you again for watching, and uh, I'll get on to the 70s, and uh, you'll see some more of those videos posted on YouTube. But once again, thanks everyone for watching.